I'm Chris Shattuck, and this is Working with jQuery and JavaScript. In this video, we're going to talk about how to use jQuery. We're going to write some JavaScript specifically for Drupal. We'll talk about how to write Ajax code with PHP, and we'll cover a lot more. Without something like JavaScript or Flash, a web page is static, meaning that the content on it can't change until we completely refresh the site. When you compare this to desktop applications, there's a couple of disadvantages to this style. In desktop applications, we can interact with our interface directly. So if we press something or right click on something, we get an immediate and contextual reaction to that activity. On a web page, however, because of the page refresh, we get a complete refresh of our interface, probably at a different position than it was to begin with, and it's also slow. Every page request requires that we load all of the resources that were required for the page initially. There's a reason why web pages work this way by default. In contrast to a desktop application, the interface that the user is working with and the location of the application code are typically in two different places. So when a web page is requested, a request goes out to a server, and then that server responds by sending some code to the browser. And then at that point, the user can interact with that code in the browser before it then sends another request by, say, filling in a form or clicking on a link. So we have this process of going and fetching data and then displaying that data in some way. Whereas with a desktop application, all of that happens in one location. Often we can improve the usability of our website by adding elements that work a bit more like a desktop application. And we can do that through the use of JavaScript. There are two primary use cases for this. The first is that we might want to display information to the user conditionally based on some action that they take, such as hovering over something or clicking on something, but it's not something that requires a server request. So that data is already available on the client side in the browser somewhere, possibly in some hidden code on the page, and we just want to display that data in a unique way, for example, a pop-up or a hover over, something like that. The other use case is that we want to grab some data or send some data to the server and pull something back to use dynamically. And this is called Ajax. One example of this might be to sign up for a newsletter. You might want the form to be able to be filled in and submitted without requiring a page refresh. And so you could do that by submitting the form via Ajax and processing it on the server side and then it sends back a message that says that the form has been successfully processed and you can deal with it at that point. But the interface that the user sees hasn't changed except maybe for that box where they filled in the form. When it comes to actually implementing the code that adds these usability improvements, you'll often begin by leveraging existing libraries and then add your custom code on top of that just like we would leverage existing modules in Drupal to extend Drupal's functionality and then add a custom module on top. Probably the most important library to wrap your mind around is jQuery. jQuery is included in Drupal by default and most of the code that you see in Drupal and the code that we're going to use for the module that we build in this video is based off of jQuery. What jQuery does is allow us to easily access and manipulate data in the page, or it's also called the DOM, D-O-M, which is short for Document Object Model. And so when we reference the DOM, what we mean is the actual content of the page. The content of the page is in the hierarchy. So there are pieces of content that are inside of other pieces of content, and all of those when we're talking jQuery and JavaScript are considered nodes. And we can navigate through those nodes on the page and work with them in various ways. The goal of the initial examples in this video are going to be to establish a basic understanding of jQuery. We'll begin by talking about selectors, which is how we select objects inside of the DOM. 
We'll move on to looking at how to manipulate those objects. We'll talk about how to react to certain behaviors that the user takes on the page, such as clicking or hovering over. And then we'll talk about adding CSS and certain effects to that manipulation as we go through. Once we've established those basics, we can build on them to explain how to wrap up your JavaScript so that it can be leveraged by Drupal in the most effective way. And we'll look at how to include JavaScript in your module using various methods. We'll then talk about how to work with Ajax in your module without actually having to write any JavaScript code at all. And finally, we'll look at the various utilities that exist already inside of Drupal that allow you to leverage a lot of this interactivity without writing code from scratch.